Yes, 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 people. Back again. Raps on TV. Here to talk all the best things in boxing. It's been a busy weekend, mainly down and in down in the US. We saw the man who goes by Sal Canelo Alvarez take on the Crusher Kovalev. Um, so looking forward to getting into that 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 fight tonight. Um, agenda. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Canelo versus Kovalev. Also going to be moving into the Ryan Garcia, who also fought on the undercard against uh, a Filipino Filipino champion who goes by the name of Duno. Um, try and do a brief recap on the Wilder interview. Um, of course, this Thursday, which is going to be an, an unusual one for us boxing fans, we're going to see Inoue take on Donaire for the WBSS final. That's a a great, a great fight, great matchup that I'm looking forward to, to watching. Um, we're also going to recap on all the other world news in boxing. Um, I guess a lot of people are, uh, are talking about the KSI versus Logan fight, which is taking place in LA. But they are two world champions in the boxing, from the boxing uh, pedigree, uh, true boxing pedigree, in Billy Joe Saunders and Devin Haney that are going to be on the undercard. So hopefully they give the new boxing fans some entertainment, entertainment and we'll be looking forward to seeing who dials in uh, and, and and signs up for that pay per view. Uh, don't worry about tonight's calls. Um, get in as soon as you can, whenever you need to. Uh, the number, as always, is zero one five zero six three five three nine five five. Running solo today, a variety of reasons. London traffic, Guy Fawkes night, November the fourth, as we do this Tuesday show. So um, yeah, we're running um, solo. And also going to just be able to chopping up the fights and, and talk through. So this weekend, um, headlined over in um, Las Vegas. Uh, sorry, I think I said LA earlier. Uh, Las Vegas, we saw Sal Canelo Alvarez take on the crusher Kovalev. Um, definitely uh, going into that fight, a lot of people were kind of saying it went under the under, under the radar. Um, and it was one of those fights that, you know, uh, if you look at it from a... a Canelo perspective it's definitely a big challenge for him um, but it's also potentially a, a, a pick and a cherry pick in the sense that Kovalev is probably one of the weaker champions in that 175 division so uh, definitely impressive that Canelo stepped up to light heavyweight um, to challenge for Kovalev's belt um, so that fight took place um, and again um, if we're going to be honest we really would say or in my point of view I don't really feel that this fight got started I don't feel that you know um, uh, from round one it was sort of all action or a fast paced uh, fight I felt that it was quite slow um, I think again if people um, are looking at it and there's a few things I do want to talk on actually but um, if people that were watching the fight were expecting you know um, variety of punches combinations um, you know <laughs> Lots of power shots, especially from the the natural 175 pounder. Um, we just didn't see that, um, so it was definitely interesting to kind of see the response to that. Um, because anybody that, that was watching the fight, like myself, you probably could have scored that for Kovalev um, being ahead. I felt that you know his his not necessarily jab was was as, as efficient in terms of the Anthony Yard fight or what we've seen in the past. But I think he was doing the job. He was able to do the double jab. I thought he kept the range um, relatively uh, to his comfort zone, even though Canelo was applying the pressure in terms of back foot. But I felt Canelo was coming forward and slipping um, and, and, and keeping a high guard just to kind of make the shots graze his gloves or just kind of graze the side of him. So for me, I would have said um, I definitely felt that, you know, uh, Kovalev would have been, um, how do I say, he, he, he probably would have been impressed with how he was performing Going into the later rounds, got to the tenth round, he was still standing. And uh, although Canelo started landing more shots and probably being more active, it's fair to say I felt that Kovalev was still in there. Then we got to the eleventh, and ultimately, out of nowhere, it's fair to say um, we saw uh, Canelo deliver like he's delivered in the past, um, an absolute bomb um, to uh, Ko Kovalev's uh, chin. I think it was the right. That really was the most damaging punch, but there was a lead up of punches in terms of to the body, uh, left hook, and then that's that right, which was kind of thrown from a different awkward position because he was kind of stood to the side of uh, Kovalev. But Kovalev nonetheless went down um, 
and the fight was over and the ref called it off straight away. Um, and Canelo, rightly so, in my opinion, goes to be lauded as as as, as, as a great fighter and a good champion, um, whichever way you want to phrase it. I think for me, um, there was a lot of uh, kind of like comments online, which again, really surprised me, was that it was a fix or there was something going on. And I mean, again, you know... Uh, I openly say we we all say you know a lot of us are fans, but we've watched boxing over the years. We've seen fighters probably take a dive or go down by a weak shot. If in my opinion, and I think anyone that believes that they're they're crazy. I think if you believe Kovalev went down and took a dive, you're mad. Um, I think that was a clean shot that uh, Canelo delivered and landed. And I think if you look at past Canelo opponents when he's been able to land that clean shot, bar probably. Uh, Triple G and even Jacobs to a degree um, most opponents have gone down and they've gone down in similar f- fashion or style to um, Kovalev so I'm not saying that he's a big K- KO puncher but what I'm saying is that when he does get the knockout on guys he does finish them in a similar style to what he's done with Kovalev um, so I think anyone that decides to say that uh, this is this this fight was a fix I really think you need to look at yourself and just see what you're looking at in the in the ring and what what I do find funny and maybe because they believe this guy is not a threat I do not know but uh, the Ryan Garcia versus Duno fight if anybody wanted to call a fix on a specific fight that one in my opinion you, you would have had more than uh, justification to do so because that was in my opinion a first round farce um, Garcia probably threw about five six punches that in my opinion grazed barely caught uh, do know nothing as sweet or, or, or as planted as the Canelo punches on Kovalev um, and he went down and this was the first round this is the first round where you're probably supposed to be at your freshest nervous energy granted but he rolled over like he had been shot and I think there's limited sort of conversations around that finish which in my opinion is much more questionable so yeah I think it's it's, it's very harsh on anybody talking about Canelo. Um, I mean, the rumours, I say people are saying, you know, it's the it's the haters, the, the detractors. Um, I'm not seeing it like that. I'm seeing it across the board from different people that have liked different fighters in the past. But I just say, you, you, can't, you can't knock Canelo. And I mean, the question after this fight was really from a lot of people, is he pound for pound? Um, in my opinion, you have to say, yes, I will put the asterisk clause... Um, whatever you want to call it, which will say, look, he does have a troubled past, not in terms of that um, he's a criminal, but more in a sense of, we know with Canelo, the judges are always going to be in his side. This fight proved it. I didn't have him go two rounds ahead. Close, yes, but not two rounds ahead, um, uh, even though he got the knockout. In the past, we've seen that the number one sort of measure of that is against Mayweather, where he was absolutely scored and still got a judge. Uh, scoring the fight in his favour, so we do know that Canelo is always going to have the judges on his side, which is a is is a negative for him because people believe that he's paid the judges, and then we have the famous meat scandal, um, which he's served his time. We've moved on, um, and also the whole Triple G for, uh, sort of saga, the delaying of that fight, not allowing that fight to happen, dropping the belt instead of making uh, the fight after he was in the ring with Triple G and said he would. So I think on those basis, I can see why people may want to say he's not pound for pound. But I think if you're going to look at the other options of fighters that you could place there, I don't think that really there's a strong enough argument that the likes of realistically Lomachenko, who's never been undisputed, so I think that goes against him. Um, um, And the other one would be Crawford. And I think Crawford definitely would be on that list. And he's in the top three, just like Lomachenko. Um, On the both of them have got a great style to watch. But I think you've got to look at Crawford and be honest and say, look, is he testing himself at 147? We know who he's fighting up in December, Mean Machine, who the guy is how the guy's been marketed as opposed to his real name. He's fought Khan, but we know what it is. It is what it is with uh, Amir Khan. And he won the belt from Jeff Horn, which, OK, that's what he needed, he needed to do. But if we're going to sit here and say that, you know, he's fighting the toughest competition, um, we know he's not. Yes, the argument is, well, he's not in the same promotional well, then the argument goes to why did he sign that contract? So, again, um, for me, I just think, you know, we can't say because of this, because of that, somebody should be on the powerful list. No, Canelo is out there. 
in the last 12 months, even if you would arguably say, what, last September, he fought Triple G, Rocky Fielding again, that was a challenge going up the division, then fought Jacobs, now fought Kovalev. I mean, if you're going to look, if you're going to compare that to any of the other two guys, I don't think there's much to stand on in terms of opponents um, and quality of the opponents. So you've got to just give, take your hat off to Canelo and say, look, at the moment he's a pound for pound um, until Lomachenko probably takes on a few more dangerous uh, fighters um, until uh, Crawford can decide whether he stays at 147 or maybe goes down to 140 and takes on a Josh Taylor. I don't know, but, you know, until that fight, those dangerous start fights start happening for him, you know, it's going to be hard for him to be number one as pound for pound. And then you've got to look at the pay-per-view on both of these guys. You know, Canelo, um, in my opinion... Um, blows smoke, you know what I mean, if you compare the pay-per-view options between um, uh, Canelo versus Crawford and Lomachenko, he's, him alone probably does more than those guys in a year from one fight, so again, we know, yes, it's the zone, but I would like to see the zone maybe start revealing numbers of how many people are subscribing around the time of a Canelo fight, because that could be an interesting thing, and potentially a surge in how their business is operating, so yeah, lots to kind of dissect last weekend. Um, definitely don't think Canelo took a dive. Uh, I think we just got to give our hats off to him. Um, and I think the, the, the second question was, well, who does he fight, fight now? We all know that he's the franchise champion. Um, what does that mean? What does that bring to, you know, if we're going to be honest, what does that bring to us fans? You know, what does that mean in, in terms of getting the best fights um, and seeing him fight, you know, the best of the best? I'm sceptical. I wouldn't be surprised if Canelo takes maybe the next year out and just kind of fights who he wants to fight. Um, literally, I don't think... I think, you know, if you look at it from super middle to light, light, light heavy to middle, I think he's now that cash cow. He's now the Mayweather of that division. You know, anybody that chooses to fight uh, Canelo is automatically kind of guaranteed a payday. The rumours were that... Uh, Kovalev received 12 million for this fight so arguably you would say that you know you know Callum Smith is is, is a big fight I think that's a huge a huge fight I'm pretty certain Sky would veto to make that happen in in, in Liverpool so they can get some pay-per-view numbers off that um, so yeah so I think you, that's that's a huge option for him um, I think you're talking about you know um, Billy Joe Saunders a lot of people believe he'll stay away from him that could be the case but again, he's got a title. Um, you're looking at uh, 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 Benavidez, somebody uh, 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 who's also got a title. Is that where Canelo may want to, you know, have a have a all? I would say Mexican Latino clash because Benavidez, I believe, these maybe mum, there's, there's there's some Latino on that side anyway. So you know, they, they could be in a, a, an American Latino clash there. Um, who else are we talking about? Um, Charlos, you know, we've got we've got the Charlo brothers there. Um, so yeah, for me, I think um, if we're talking about Canelo's options, I think he's literally got the pick of the bunch. I didn't even mention anyone at light heavyweight, but you know, I'm pretty certain uh, Anthony Yard would go in with him. Probably, probably the only one who probably wouldn't would be a Boazzi because I feel maybe the development and the trajectory that he's on within his career it wouldn't make sense to really fight a Canelo now. Um, um, in my opinion, but maybe that's if Canelo puts a check on the table and Canelo feels, you know, I doubt it, but yeah, if Canelo felt that would be an option for him, then maybe, but yeah, I think Barats is probably the only one, um, but there's a lot of, lot of options for him, so I mean, we can only hope that sort of in the next year that we get to see um, uh, true fights, you know, and, 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 and big uh, opportunities uh, that are delivered, you know, Caleb Plant is another name that that I've not mentioned there. Um, he's he, he's he's a serious contender in my opinion. Um, love to see him against somebody like Billy Joe Saunders. So yeah, tons of tons of options for um, Canelo. Um, so moving on, uh, we are going to also talk about um, the little recap. Anyway, let's do a little recap on because I've I, I won't lie, I've, sl- I've slanted the Garcia Duno fight. It was a one round, and to me, it was just a fast. Um, but in terms of interviews last week, I um, got to interview the. Uh, WBC heavyweight champ Deontay Wilder. Um, good interview. Get check it out if you haven't done yet, done so yet. It's out on YouTube. 
Uh, make sure you subscribe as you're listening to that and you're sharing it to whoever feels necessary. Um, but it was really good to kind of chop it up with the champ, uh, get his thoughts on Victor Ortiz, um, the respect he's got for him, also what he's looking to do in terms of making adjustments um, after that first fight. Um, also good to hear his thoughts on you know Fury um, and what he's doing um, and the other heavyweights uh, in, in the division all round and just his take on, on life and what he's doing in regards to um, working with chatties in Africa. So it's really good uh, to just kind of get a bit more of a sit down with, with him. So please make sure you check that out. I think that's one that a lot of you guys will enjoy. So listen, I'm going to open the lines. Um, as we're doing a bit of a freestyle show, I'm going to um, probably hold the call f- for a bit longer. So make sure you stay on the line. And when it's your time, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to have a few questions answered. Hello, 488. The floor is yours. Hello. Dave Johan, boxing voice. Yes, I'm not too bad. Thanks yourself. Yeah, good, good. Excellent episode uh, last week, mate. Um, Thank you. Phenomenal. Uh, great interview you did there as well. And uh, I've asked people to, to listen to that. So we, we definitely, you've got some more subscribers there, mate, to be fair. Thank you very um, much. Much appreciated. Just a, no, no problem. So just, just a quick one. My mm-hmm. thoughts on the Canelo uh, beating Kovalev mm-hmm. uh, fight. Um, for me, a hundred percent, he should be pound for pound number one now. I mean, the, he's done it at four different weight classes. What yeah. more does this man have to do? Yeah. Um, it's made that victory over Triple G look uh, look a lot more sweeter as well. Mm. I mean, we, we have to remember as well that Kovalev was you know was was a world champ at light heavyweight. It wasn't a pushover fight. Yeah. It wasn't like he was completely over the hill. Um, one could argue that Anthony Yard almost had him out of there, yeah. which we were all rooting for for, uh, uh, for Yard to take him out of there in round eight, and we were all at the edge of our seats. The inexperience maybe never never got the uh, the result, but what a phenomenal uh, result. Um, yeah. that, that KO was completely brutal. Couldn't mm. be up there with, with knockout of the year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Phenomenal. And you, you're right, his choices are endless. Well, does he stay at like, heavyweight? Does he drop down to super middle? I can't see him dropping down too much back to middle, but yeah. certainly has to be super middle now or light heavyweight. Um, it's just it's just brilliant. It's opened <coughs> up so many doors. Um, and the other point I was just going to make as well is, you know, the, the Newey fight uh, this yeah. week as well. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. That guy, if, if, um, if, if people don't know who he is, which I'm sure they do, but certainly check out his record. He is, you know, another one that's going to be just a KO master. Yeah. Um, so it's just a bit so weird how that one's gone under the radar, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it's, you know what it is, in my opinion, it's the typical, it's kind of left field in the sense that it's being shown in Japan. It's on a Thursday. So from a time perspective, I think we're all going to be sitting at our desks while this fight is taking place. Um, so I think that's that's really what, what the cause is. But I agree with you. I think a lot of people are sleeping on it, slightly because it's the lighter guys. But I think, you know, this guy's got... Really, we're talking phenomenal power. We're talking wilder type power for the look for one of the little guys. So, yeah, you're right. I think everyone should check that out if they can. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I mean, this week as well, Billy Joe Saunders is fighting on Saturday as well. Yeah, we got Callum Smith in a few weeks, so loads happening, and and it's um, it's just great. I mean, uh, the, the the Taylor and Progress fight as well. I think Taylor deservedly got the result, maybe by a round. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. But you wouldn't have argued either way, would you? If Pro exactly. got the result. Exactly. No, you definitely wouldn't have. And and I just wanted to take you take take you back uh, because you know I've I was saying earlier online I've seen a lot of people saying you know Kovalev took a dive, or oh, this fight mm. was fixed. What's your thoughts on that in general? I think it's disrespectful to to the to the result. I mean, look, we have to. We, there's always going to be conspiracy theories. I mean, you know, and, and people saying, oh yeah, he's taking a dive, but the the, the point is. You know, he's beaten an athlete where people have... He, Kovalev is a proud man. Mm. You know, I mean, when, when when Andre Ward beat him in the fashion that he did beat him in, yeah. he was completely um, not annoyed, frustrated, angry. He's a very, very, very proud man. Yeah. And to take a dive in, in, at the MGM in front of thousands of people, I think, you know, um, it's delusional to think that a man of that stature would take a dive. I don't think exactly. an athlete of that capability will do it. I think we're, we're, we're downplaying what Canelo is, which is yeah. an elite athlete. Yes, what, what you said was right, Kojo, about the uh, the Mexican meat scandal yeah. and taking 
uh, Triple G a bit too late. Okay, everyone has faults, but you know, I, I think now he's right at those wrongs, and you know, to say it's a dive is is totally and utterly delusional. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with, with that, and unfortunately, I guess. He's always going to have these detractors, but I think we just got to call it as it is. Anybody that's watched boxing, just look at Kovalev's legs as he's as he's as he's yeah. hanging from before he hangs from the ropes. Look at his legs. You you can't you can't practice that type of thing. So um, yeah, um, no, I appreciate no. that. I appreciate your comments. No, you, yeah, you can't. You can't. I mean, <laughs> what's he gone to? school for that you just it's can't insane. do that that was a natural reaction it's a natural you know from 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 a big puncher um i mean is when you're watching that it just as a knockout um does it make you think and i and i will say i will say this is a, is a criticism of canelo but does it make you think how yard wasn't able to do such a perform get, get I, I mean i know he didn't land his that type of shot um frequently enough but it was just the way canelo landed that shot you know it was just like the fight wasn't Going in that direction, did you think how could Yard know why, why wasn't Yard able to do that? Could you even vision Yard doing that? In, in round eight, I thought he had him. I yeah. thought it was done. But but the thing is as well, um, it was experience. You know, Canelo's had what fifty three, fifty four fights mm. um, with an impressive record against the caliber he's had. Amateur fights, he's been boxing since he was fifteen. Yeah. You know, against grown men. Yeah. Anthony Yard admittedly entered the the, um, the amateur game late. What did he have? Twelve amateur fights. Yeah, if that, yeah. Um, and and I think it was just experience. But Yard will come again. Yeah. He's young. He's talented. And it was just I think he kind of exposed Kovalev. I mean, Kovalev did not look great, did he? Mm. Um, that fight. Um, and if anything, you know, Yard was a, was an underdog. He was in, in in Russia, and it was just a shame that Yard. If he was a bit more experienced, yeah. 100%, yeah. 100%, he would have bowled him over. But yeah. Canelo, I mean, he was clearly practising those shots in the gym. Yeah, exactly. Um, he was working on something. I mean, it's, it reminds me of a way in which um, the Ricky Hatton and Floyd Mayweather fight, how, you know, round two, I think um, Mayweather was, was wobbled mm. and then done another different weight. And then out of nowhere, that check punch yeah, just a- came and just bang, it was yeah, exactly. Um, the timing. So it's timing. Timing mm. was great, and it's just great that we've got an athlete like this who's young, who's talented, and, and we should appreciate. And I think that's what we do. We're, yeah. we're sometimes very cynical as a boxing community, where we don't appreciate people in their time, and afterwards we say, "Do you know what? He was he was great." But yeah. let's, let's appreciate this athlete as, as as we are now. Definitely, and and I mean, just on the yard point, and I didn't mean it even as any criticism for yard, but what I mean is, obviously, when yard and Kovalev would have fought, there wouldn't have been any. Uh, rehydration clauses but Canelo ensured that there was a rehydration clause in and in my opinion I feel that's what affected Kovalev's performance because I felt yes people would argue well he fights at a heavier weight so you know if he's fighting at a lighter weight that should be, go to his advantage but I would say no because the power maybe isn't as there as, as it usually is number one um, and number two I think he was trying to fight cautiously you know it maybe thinking, look, maybe I can't knock this guy out, you know, because again, we've, we've rarely seen, I mean, we've not seen Canelo being knocked out and I can't think of when he's been knocked to the canvas. I'm sure he has, I've heard it, but I've never visibly seen yeah. it, do you know? I think, was it, was it maybe he was bubbled? <coughs> he was, um, yeah, exactly. By Cotto's brother? I want to say, I was going to say Hatton or Cotto's brother, so, I, so I was, uh, and it wasn't, you know what I mean, he still won the fight, it wasn't a threat. That's why I think it's not really kind of replayed it, it, it through, through uh, TV and stuff. But, yeah, so for me, um, I feel that's probably one of the advantages Canelo took was by having that weight clause because, yeah, um, that would have... I feel that did, I feel that would have had an effect on Kovalev, but... Uh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. he balloons up and, and his natural weight as well. I mean, it's been rumoured to be something like 180 when he's walking around. This is what I mean. And, and he has to... So he's a big, big guy, yeah. you know, um, and, and and you've heard the stories as well, no doubt, where he used to spar people like you know Kovalev before, yes. um, and everything like that. So this is, not, I mean, the real question will be. I asked Eddie Hearn last week. One of the questions I actually did get in into the media scrum was, does Canelo will he be a threat at light heavyweight? And and Eddie Hearn said, no, he don't think he, he will, but he will have enough power to uh, he will do enough to beat Kovalev, which he did. Yeah. Um, now the follow-on question from 
beyond that is, I mean, where do we see him with the likes of that division with uh, Bivol and uh, Bubi and... Exactly, you know, and does, he, does he hold the power? Yeah, exactly. And, and actually, just while you're on that, because... Um, obviously, we, we mentioned the uh, you mentioned the media scrum and there was a collar fight last weekend. How how, how was that? Yes. Obviously, a good send off for the Manchester lads. Yeah, um, how it was, was it overall? Uh, yeah, excellent send off for uh, for Crawler. I mean, um, true gentleman. Every time we we interview him, and, and I know you up as well. He's, yeah. he's just great, isn't he? And it's it's going to be. He's been a, a great ambassador to the sport. Um, it was a very close fight. You, you could argue it could have been a draw. But I think win, lose, or draw, Crawler was, was going to get out of there anyway. So that was, it was a nice send-off for him in his home city. And, you know, we'll, we'll see him again, no doubt, on Sky Sports and the Pundit and so on yeah, and so forth. Exactly. Um, Katie, Katie Taylor, three-weight, um, sorry, uh, two-weight world champion, the third that Ireland's produced. Mm. Excellent for, for that as well. Um so yeah, it was, it was a it was a pretty deep night to be fair. Yeah, no, no, it looked it looked it on the, on the TV, and obviously you had the Felix Cass versus Jack Cullen fight, which which yeah. might go down as fight of the year. But that was a really good fight. I know Cass got the stoppage in the eighth round, but Cullen really came with with, with, with we really came to fight, right? He brought he brought all the action. He, he did, yeah. So unfortunately, in round one, he was he was knocked to the canvas. Um, Felix Cash very very strong, mm. um, just put it on him, but. Colin um, just just kept on coming. I mean, he, he at one point we, we thought he was going to take Felix Cash out of there as well with the, with the amount of punches he was landing, but Felix Cash came on strong and, yeah. and just closed the show. I think that the stoppage was right. He, um, stoppage came from a uh, from a stumble. It's kind of capitalised and, and started to to land land at will, and, and the ref was right to stop it. Yeah. I mean, Jack Cullen will come again definitely. Um, but the next question is for, for uh, Felix Cash. You know, do, does he does he now step up? Because yeah, I think that it will be the right call if, we, if if he does get stepped up. I mean, yeah. he's, he's certainly talented enough, isn't he? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and the last question before I let you go. Um, which the next caller? Call um, will you be paying for the pay per view of KSI versus Logan this weekend? <laughs> um. I don't know too much about it. I mean, I'm probably the only one in the world. If, if I was to pass in the street, I just want to know who they are. Yeah, okay. in, in terms of the actual fight, yeah. um, Devin Haney, I want to watch him. Yeah. Um, I want to watch Billy Joe Saunders yeah. and, and other talented people on there. KSI and Paul Logan. Um, it is what it's it is. Come on, to be yeah. fair. It is what it is. And I support Billy Joe. I'll, I'll pay for that side of it. Mm. And as a, I'll, I'll probably dip my toe into the water just to see what this what the fuss is all about. Yeah. However, just before I go, I'd, li- I'd just like to say that because it's intriguing in terms of YouTube fighters and, and so on and so forth, I understand why millions of people are watching it. So as an event, you know, we, I don't think we should be knocking it in terms of exactly. the event. Yeah. Um, but it's like when Mayweather fought McGregor, people are like, I'm not going to buy that. And They're lying. It's sold thousands. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so I'll watch it for the curiosity mainly because of Billy Joe Saunders and I'll, I'll probably see what the, what the fuss is all about as well. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm on that train with you, mate. I'm I'm, I'm paying the £10 for curiosity and it's Billy Joe Saunders and Devin Haney. So, you know what? If it was 20 right. quid, I'd probably be grumbling a bit more, but I'd still pay. But £10, you know what? It is what it is. Um, I'm used to staying up late, watching, so yeah. Well, you're watching some boxing, aren't you, for 10 ex- quid and, ex- and ex- exactly. make a night. Exactly. And, and, and I'm intrigued either, to so, see... Yeah. And I am intrigued to see how they do it because, you know, I don't I don't think there's a lot of options for this sort of celebrity YouTube thing. But I think it could, we might see it, What I guess what I'm saying is we might see different people come into boxing in, in that type of a, you know, background. People that have maybe a career in something else and they're like, you know what, I've got a grudge with this guy, let's sell it in the ring. I, I think we might see more of that. So, yeah, um, so I'm interested to see what the play is. Um, but listen, Dave, thank you very much for um, calling in and um, definitely we'll catch up at the next event down in London. 100%. You take care. Take All care, man. Best. Cheers. Thanks again. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care, man. Cheers. Going out to 985, Resident Daniel. I see you there, bro. How you doing? How you doing, bro? You good, yeah? We're good, we're good, we're good. How's things? Everything you, you enjoy the boxing? Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, where can I start? Listen, Canelo... Fucking absolute beast. Um, uh, what can we say about him? 
as what I think your first call is, you know, it's pound for pound, got to be pound for pound, did it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean like, I mean, it's shaking everyone's belt. Yeah. I mean, fucking hell. But, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see who he fights next. Um, who would I like to see him fight next? You know what? I wouldn't mind seeing him in there with, like, Callum Smith or Usyk. Yeah. Oh, you... Uh, yeah? Yeah! Why not? I mean, Why not? Usyk is, feels like it's too high in terms of the weight class. Like, there's a lot of memes going out there of Canelo... They're like, yeah, they've got some bodybuilder that looks like Canelo, and they're like, yeah, he's preparing for Wilder. I think Usyk, especially now that he's a heavyweight, I don't know. Yeah. I know he's, Usyk may be coming down, but I don't see it, bro. He would have to drop a lot. But yeah. Callum Smith, I th- I think we could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know when Canelo's going on, like, absolutely just sweeping up everything. Yeah. How good does that show that Floyd Mayweather was? Well, there we go, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How good does that show Floyd, how good Floyd Mayweather was? I mean, we all know he's brash. Yeah. But what a boxing, what a boxing genius. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Oh, um, great point, great point, because Canelo, you know, if you look at his CV in the last, in my opinion, last year, you're seeing yeah. uh, nothing but good fighters, um, great quality that he's beating. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mayweather, and Mayweather really took him to the to the school. To, to in, in, he did, didn't he? Yeah, he did. so, um, great point. Yeah, he did. Um, I think, like you were saying earlier, um, you know, um, uh, Canelo's going to probably have a year out or so. He deserves it. He's, he's, he's fucking been grafting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's mm. been working hard. Um, he's been very active. Yep. Um, so, yeah, maybe have a little break and then see what's after that. Um, as for, uh, you lot was talking about the, uh, the, the card on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it £10, yeah? Yeah, £10, 10 pound pay-per-view, him. yeah. I'll have a, I think I'll have a bit of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Exactly. Ten pound, little bit yeah. of boxing. You've done. You've spent the money on worse, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. Spent the money on worse. Um, well, I certainly have anyway. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I'll have some of that. Yeah, I'll have some of that. And your and your man Billy Joe Saunders. Um, I was going to say news last week. Actually, we didn't maybe, maybe we didn't talk about it. Chris Eubank is returning to the ring December the seventh down in New York, fighting a tough opponent. Right. Would you make of that? Happy, looking forward Sorry. to seeing him come back. Who, um, Chris Eubank Junior. Yeah, Chris Eubank Junior. Yeah, of course, definitely. Um, it's always good to see Chris Eubank Junior uh, around. You know what I mean? Um, you know he brings. Uh, he brings a little bit of edge, you know what I mean? A little bit of needle when he's around. Um, good attitude. Yeah, so definitely be looking forward to that. It's a good, good fight coming up, you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. It's all, good. all right, man, brother. So, listen, we're going to let you go, move on to the next caller. So, thank you for yeah, supporting keep as up usual. The good work, Kodjo. No worries, bro. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work, man. Keep covering that ground, yeah? Definitely, mate. Definitely. Take it easy, nice bro. One. Cheers, thanks. Take care. Take yeah. care. Bye. So we got nine one zero. I think that's Mr. Sam. Nine one zero. Hello. Good evening. Max on TV. Yes. How are you, How you doing? So you well? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Just uh, enjoying the cold weather. <laughs> yeah, as we all are. As we all are. Thoughts on the weekend's action? Uh, I think it was. Oh, this guy's on the train. Do you want to call back when you're off the train? I was gonna say you're on, on on public transport. Yes, I am on public transport. Okay. But I can still take. All right. I can still work. Um, Canelo. I feel that he picked the weakest champion. Of uh, not saying he's taking anything away from him. Yeah. I just feel, uh, I just feel that Canelo. It was a strategic move to get Kovalev. I was wrong for my comments before when I said that 
down she's so always a thing just needs to sort of quite flash um, I think you know I was quite vocal with saying that she's all a bit um, but she sort of wasn't going to win or it's a big risk and it's a bad management move from David Hay but you know on the flip side I said it was going to be a positive and she does pull it off so, you know he made this out of the tire on the stool from what I understand am I correct to that by saying that yeah, bro, but listen, you're gonna to have to call back because it's you're too you're too low, your volume's too is okay. too is too 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 low. So, yeah, yeah. So we have to move on from there. Sorry. Um. So yeah. So in terms of other boxing news, um, it's been a um, it's been a weird week to be fair. Not a, not a lot of rumors. Um, I guess the one rumor we have heard about is um, Dillian White should be active. And fighting again soon. Those of you that are on Instagram, you can see that he's been quite uh, busy in terms of making a bit of a promo video um, in terms of when he's going to be back. No date announced, um, but he is saying he's putting in that graft uh, for his next fight. So we're definitely looking forward to seeing him back in the ring. Um, I would have said, um, yeah, from a perspective of uh, the undercards of the Cronach, versus, um, I've got his opponent's name, but from the Crawler card, it was a big farewell fair fight for him. So, you know, it wasn't really going to do anything other than be a Crawler win. Um, but yeah, Felix Cash versus Jack Cullen, as as we spoke about with Dev, a really good fight. For those of you that haven't seen it, try and check that out. Um, I think Felix Cash is kind of, I won't even say flying under the radar. I think they've been doing a good job with him over at Matchroom, just kind of steadily building him up. Um, if those of you uh, will remember, kind of like um, Craig Richards, he's been part of that Next Generation camp. So they've been doing a lot of the shows down at the York Hall, um, kind of making sure they're active. Um, but I would say, you know, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for him because that was an impressive win for him. Um, and who knows what he could maybe do in his division. You know, that fight itself, um, I want to say it was a WBA. It was, it was, it was, there was a, a, a belt or a title behind that um let's just check because we don't we haven't seen but yeah the um, that was really uh, a good fight and one that a lot of people are saying will be sort of fight of the year uh contender yeah so you actually won the commonwealth uh title um so i think sam i see you back on the line we're gonna hope that your audio is a little bit better and you're not got public announcements everywhere sam hello mate is yes it clear? yeah that's better yeah he's gonna have to speak up but yeah that's clearer Yeah, that's better, that's better. Cool, cool, what's going on? So, I don't know, how much did you catch with what I said before? Um, we caught your bit about Chisora and the uh, prediction. You being quite vocal. Oh, yeah, I, I, I hold my hands up. I was wrong for saying that. I made some big outlandish comments saying that, you know, it's bad management they hate the part. Um, which I did think if he lost, it would have been a bad matter. But I think Price is absolutely finished now. Ah, uh, bro, you you flopped, bro, man. So I'm gonna have to put your mute. Your mute. this guy in his in his reception. Um, you got to call back where you get some better rece- get get a better reception, bro. So um, but yeah, on that Chisora price, um, we'll move on to that as a topic though. Um, uh, again, guys, make sure when you're on YouTube or Facebook, you put your comments along this uh, about any of the discussion points. Um, but quite well, something that's being rumored is um potentially Chisora versus Usyk. What do you guys think of that? Is that a fight that you would like to see um, soon? Um, I know Chisora is talking about trying to get out again. It's unlikely he's going to be able to get out um, for the uh, Joshua undercard, uh, Joshua Ruiz fight. He wants to get on the undercard. That's highly unlikely. The person he has named that he wants to fight on the undercard is Jarrell Miller, who in the last week has actually signed for, so it is due to sign for top rank. That's the rumours that are doing the rounds. Um, we've seen Eddie Hearn's comments He's um, obviously been quite vocal on that as a whole. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, for me, I think I do find it quite interesting the terminologies that are being used with with Joel Miller. I find that a lot of this terminology around do his time, service time, I feel that's a bit wrong and painting a bit more of a criminal element. I'm not saying that he's an angel, um, and I'm not saying that he's innocent. He's what he's done was was bang out of order. But I also feel that you know we need to just control that narrative and. Yeah, and time and doing your time coming. Let's this 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 probably leave that away. But I think for Jarrell Miller, you know, if he signs with top rank, I think they're gonna easily be able to kind of raise his not only raise his profile, 
Um, but it'll definitely get him into some competitive fights. So, Sam, I'll see you there again. I'm coming back to you. I hope you're not flopping. 910, 910. Hello, is it clear now? Yes, clear? that's clearer, yeah. We're here. Yeah, We're live. For, you're, We're you're live, bro. First, you got t- public announcements, then phone reception. Bro, what's good, man? It's a dedication man? for raps, man. I hear you. I feel you on that one, <laughs> man. <laughs> nah. <laughs> so, yeah, so no, I, we got you on the Chisora price. That's fine. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it is what it is. I feel there were a lot of reasons, but I think, you know, Chisora just brought it to him and took it to him that night. Yeah, definitely. I 100% agree. Chisora was, was bringing more, as he likes to say. He, did, he, he generally bought everything I felt like. It's just weird with Chisora, because sometimes you see him fight and you think he's down and out and he's finished and then he'll bring back some bottom performances like that. And, mm. You know, he's just, he's just an awkward one. You never know what Chisora you'll get turned up on the night. Yeah. Um, but no, congratulations to him. Congratulations to him. I think now he's going to push on to try and get uh, some decent titles or see if he can move on to world ranking levels and, and just get as many paydays as possible before it's time to kind of retire from the game entirely. Um, Definitely. But yeah, it was good. Canelo, absolute legend. Absolute legend. Pound for pound, great. Um, like I said earlier, I do, I do think he strategically picked uh, Kovalev as uh, he was an easier target. <laughs> now I think Canelo's now the big pound for pound. He's now the big payday. It's now everything to Canelo's cool. If you want to fuck Canelo, you can, you're looking at a very nice, big, tasty uh, a, a payday. You know? Mm. Uh, I think Canelo's got... Mm. Uh, hello, mate. Yes, me? yes, yeah, we can hear you still, yeah. Yeah, he's in his he's in his high fifties. Yeah, I think it's, uh, how old is he? Is he even thirty? I don't even think he's thirty yet. Yeah, to be fair, I think he's probably touching thirty. He's not far from it. Um, yeah, he's twenty nine. Yeah, so yeah. um, yeah, exactly. He just turned twenty nine. I think he's got yeah, the options, Canelo, right? It was quite obvious he was going to win. I didn't think it... What did you say, mate? No, I said he's, he's got options. Whoever he uh, wants to fight, he can fight. Oh, yeah, easy. You know, Canelo, you're going to get a payday. You're going to get the nice pay. You're going to, you know, you're going to have the nice lights and everything like that. You're going to have the spotlight on you. So it's your chance to kind of make your mark. And, you know, it, it just kind of shows how good Floyd Mayweather was back then. It was able to dethrone Canelo and make him look so amateurish. Exactly, exactly. And in terms of so, one thing I want to move you move you to because I know you're more you're one of these young cats, um, and you're and, and you understand the social media side of everything. <laughs> but this KSI versus Logan fight, um, you're going to be signing up for that pay per view? Um, possibly, uh, probably more more than likely. I think can I, I think not Canelo, sorry, the Logan Paul KSI fight. It's a great time for boxing in the new era. It's the time to now compete with. You know, uh, uh, try and grasp your mass audience. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for Devin Haney. Um, I think it's a great time for him to shine and show he's okay. Uh, but is he fighting for a title? No, he's, Do you know, he, he, no. So he's he's he is the WBC champion. So his opponent is fighting for the title. I guess you could argue, yeah. Well, he, uh, I think with him, with, with Devin, I think he needs to keep his head. Just needs to box and really just take in and, and take in all that energy and, uh, and really grow his fan base. Because if you notice about Devin Hay, even before he got signed by uh, uh, by Eddie Hearn, he was a big, big advocate for YouTube and self promoting and getting his brand out there. So I think this is a great opportunity for him to kind of show himself. Uh, BJS as well. I think I believe he's fighting on the card. I think he's gonna. I'll be glad to see how he is. New stable, new team. Uh, just be interested to see how he boxes. Especially abroad, uh, we can tell he handles the like as he when he fought in Canada. But you mm. know, LA is a different kind of ball game. And obviously, Logan Paul and KSI, that's, that's going to be a good one. I think people just boxing fans need to stop being a bit uptight and harsh and just embrace the new change. Mm. It's not going to be constant. It's not going to be there all the time. But while it's there and while we're having the light shone on 
um, all of our other boxers. We just might as well embrace it and watch the fight. I think we'll see some good, not good boxing skills, but a decent level uh, of boxing ability from both Logan and KSI. Mm. I know they've been training quite hard for that from what I've heard and the video and the content because at the end of the day, they've got to keep their, they've got to keep their audience entertained. So, and they're getting professional licenses, so they have to kind of honour the sport and honour the, the, you know, the discipline that comes with it. So it'll be interesting to see how they come under the lights on the big stage with, a, with being classed as a pro. Yeah, no, and I think you actually hit, you made a good point there when you talk about like sort of honouring the sport. I agree with you. I think boxing fans need to chill out, even though we kind of laughed at the WBC franchise antics. Um, I'll come into that later, but I think you're right. We need to chill out. We need to embrace ev- evolution. You know, the the game evolves in general, and there's growth and there's opportunity for boxing to become a bit more of a mainstream sport. And I think. Actually, the guys, they do seem like they're training hard. What The reports that we're hearing, of course, it's to sell the fight, but from what you're seeing and from what you're hearing, you would argue that, you know, they in their minds, they're conscious that one of them's going to get knocked out. None of them wants to be getting knocked out because in their world, you become an instant meme. So I think they're going to, they are taking it very seriously. And I think, you know, um, I'm not necessarily saying I'm intrigued to see that fight. I'm more for the undercard, but... I'll take that because it's part of the package. So, yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, people need to just chill out. And, um, Thank you. I'm fine. At least someone agrees with me. Yeah, yeah no, no ways. Uh, no no ways. So, um, yeah, just in terms of, um, I guess, the game in general, um, last week we got a little interview with Deontay Wilder. Um, he spoke about some... Uh, Dean, uh, one of the callers, called in and asked him, is there any chance of Wilder uh, potentially fighting Joshua in... Uh, Lagos, Nigeria, he said he would love to see that. Wilder said, yeah, you know, if, if business gets handled appropriately in terms of fights, titles, that could happen. I mean, just taking it back in terms of, again, we're talking about, you know, boxing going into different avenues. I mean, how huge would it be if Wilder and Joshua fought in, in not just Africa, but, you know, West Africa and Nigeria specifically? Oh, oh that would be, that would be unbelievable. That would be really big for the sport of boxing. That will be big for the continent of Africa. It will be big for the country of Lagos, or, or Nigeria, sorry. And if it is held in the city of Lagos, to the capital, or wherever it is, um, I think it will be great because we're, we're now kind of bringing boxing back to the day where it used to be. Not just in the US, not just in America, but we're bringing it back around the unknown territories. We're bringing mm-hmm. it back to the thriller in Manila days. And, you know, that will be such an exciting thing for the country. Um like the, but the thing is, you got to understand the key point that John Taker said was as long as business gets handled. And I'd love to have the way this happens with the Joshua Ruiz rematch or Ruiz Joshua to, in terms of the money got paid up front and then, you know, all the boxes are kind of just, everything kind of goes into one. But the business can get sorted um, if that was to ever happen. But, you know, it will be really, really big. It will make such a big legacy and increase both the fighters' legacy and just kind of grow the all round boxing, especially in the territories in Africa where a lot of. Mate, it's from, and just puts the spotlight in Africa for a change instead of just. It just takes the Middle East, the Asia. You know, just kind of making it different and mixing up a bit. No, but def- uh, yeah, definitely. If that was to ever happen, I am on the first class flight <laughs> there. <laughs> Uh, right, with raps on TV. Yeah, yeah, uh, carrying the luggage. <laughs> no worries, boys. All love, man. <laughs> but listen, we're gonna move on. Uh, shows, shows winding up. Um, but I appreciate you calling in. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely, we'll be looking forward to next week's show. Uh, no worries. Take care, bro. Cheers, Joe, Cheers take, take care. care. Cheers. Yes, people. So yes, that's the roundup. Um, as I think it's fair to say, most people are giving Canelo his credit, so that's good to hear. Um, we've got level-headed and intelligent fans listening to the show and calling in as per usual. Um, but no, uh, this weekend, um, slightly quieter one. Um, so next weekend is next week. We'll probably try and get up a, an interview um, to kind of uh, bring bring some entertainment and action to the show. Um, other at, uh, boxing news: Miguel Burchell beat Jason Sosa for his for a belt. Javier Fortuna also knocked out Andres Quayla. So, yeah, there was a lot of action. PBC had a card, um, and, yeah, that went down, I guess, average. Not No big names there. But looking forward to seeing what's going to happen for the rest of the year. So, listen, guys, we're going to roll out 
Um, appreciate all the support as usual for the guys in the in the future and listen to the show. Please make sure you go down onto the YouTube and Facebook pages and like, share and subscribe. Much appreciated. Raps on TV, we're out.